those who are meeting me for the first time, no? so my name is Pastor VJ. And for some of you all who are uh, already heard me, no? maybe you might be thinking, it's this guy again, you read the passage, and you know my title. Ano na naman, no? Uh, uh, pabigat na naman, no? It's negative. Or again, it is, uh, uh, I'm gonna be guilt tripped again. I hope that's not gonna be the case. No? Although it is true, um, this is the last part of Romans that is very, very, uh, very, very heavy, uh, very, uh, very convicting, I, I would say. But the next week passage, that's the third, and that's the twist. But do you know why this is needed? Uh, the whole thing, yes, it is negative, no? And uh, that, that, that is my goal today, actually, for us to feel the weight of it. But the, the goal of this is to heal us. It's to heal us. You know, one of my toxic traits is that I hate taking medicine. No, I am not a good patient. By the way, uh, I, I I ignore it, no, and I I naman ako po yung parents ko, no, na hindi na kailangan yun, no, gamot gamot, tulog lang, right? I'll drink coke and I'll eat uh, whatever I want, right? Uh, and what happens? Usually, I would suffer, right? So I had an injury, I let it go bad, no, it, it, it really affected me uh, because I think I always underestimate how deep the sickness is. Medicine is meant for us, for us to be healed. If you don't believe it is, right? You know, it is a toxic trait. I'm trying to change it, but uh, you don't believe that the sickness is real and it's deep. You will not take the medicine, right? You will not believe you need to take this. You, you won't take the hassle, you no, know, of of drinking it. If you don't believe it, and that is what Romans uh, chapter one to three is trying to do to us. Um, wh why else would you need this if you don't believe? That is how bad things are. If you read the, when you heard the passage earlier, what's your honest reaction? Uh, some people would say, and, and think about it if that's your same reaction. No? Is it, is it, isn't it a little exaggerated? No? Uh, Paul, when you say those words, no one seeks God, doesn't it seem like a very, very, you know, negative outlook in life? In a way, he's saying there's no such thing as a good person. No one seeks God. So, exaggerated lang po ba yun. Um, I hope today to convince you that um, it is true. There is no such good, not no such thing as a good person. But not to get trip you into thinking na, oh, I am such a bad person. Um, that is one criticism of Christianity, by the way. I don't know if someone has already, you know, argued about you. Uh, for that, but I have had many conversations about this. No, but, uh, no aren't you using this religion as a crutch? No, do, do, do you really need this to be a good person? Do you really need this to, to, to do good things in the world? Uh, so I think we have to admit that actually uh, there are such things as you know, good people. Kahit wala pong church, even if they don't attend any church, some, a lot of people do good, isn't it? Uh, one, one famous example, uh, I appreciated uh, the decision of Bill Gates, for example, who is, although not an outright atheist, who is an agnostic, no? he, he doesn't uh, have a decision either way, who are doing a lot of good. No? Our own national hero, by the way, no? I recently learned, is also a free thinker. Si Jose Rizal po is not a, uh, doesn't really believe, no? Uh, although at that time it wasn't labeled as an atheist, but no, he, he wasn't into it. That's why he was so brave in criticizing the religious leaders, right? Uh, so, so people can do good, no? Uh, no, our honest feeling, right? We're not as bad as we could be, right? I don't think uh, we have done a crime uh, that is worthy of being kept under lock for life. Right? So I would modify this uh, when we say there's no such thing as a good person. Please understand, um, humanly speaking, there is. No? Let's take away the Christian teaching and there's nothing wrong with the good morals, right conduct kind of message. Right? The, the things we teach our children, the things we learn in school, important po yun, right? That's important for us to be a good person, a good person who can fit in society. That is not this topic. 
right? That's not a concern of Paul. Uh, even when he spoke there in the Roman Church, right, in this metropolitan city, halo kuya, no, there are good citizens, bad citizens. Uh, it's not really what he's talking about. What he's talking about in the eyes of God, that's what we need to know. There is no such thing as a good person. Okay, so this is not a plea for you na, I, I don't need to uh, I don't need to do good to my uh, fellow men. That is not what this is talking about. It means there is no one who can earn the favor of God because in the eyes of God, there is no such thing as a good person. No? So that is uh, that is the the very very core of what Paul has been telling us. No, uh, you know, a common question I also get asked is this, and. Uh, you know, with recent, recent news, that really affected me, by the way. I remember that question. You know what happened to Thailand, right? You know what happened to that school bus? You know, when I heard that, especially since maybe being a kami, you know, I, I was so affected, right? Uh, uh, you you, you look, look that up, what happened is that there were, uh, you know, uh, uh, school kids in the field trip and the bus caught fire. Uh, and I think 20, 25 people, 24 people died. And, and you know that that affected me so much. It's the new kids, right? To that question, it's always asked, why do good things happen to good people? Oh, why do bad things happen to good people? No, it's a very thorny question. No, we won't be able to answer that satisfactorily to every person. But uh, the, on the... Though we can believe what Paul is saying, at the same time, instinctively, we know right? these kids are innocent. They're good. So they're, they, there are good people, right? How could it happen to people like this? No? Um, segue, by the way, not part of our uh, flow. No? Uh, I got asked also, what will happen to those kids? Because they're kids. What if they didn't believe in Christ? My answer to that, uh, and it's a very personal answer because uh, we also lost the baby uh, in a miscarriage. So we think about it, what will happen to that? Uh, the best answer I found is from a mentor also, we just trust in the goodness of God. Okay, so what happened to those kids? Don't know. It's hard to give a final answer. We trust in the goodness of God. Okay? But the question still stands, no? Uh, eh, there are good people in the world, no? Kaya hindi natin matanggap. How come bad things happen? No? Um, so here is the, when Paul says Jew or Greek, everyone is under sin. No? The past messages we've had, I think, no, na napopokpok na po siguro sa atin, sin ay po lahat, no? That's the argument of Paul. Um, both the Jews, the chosen people, uh, the reason he uses the term Greek, it's a cast-all term to say, uh, these are the best of the Gentiles. So Paul is saying, no, the best of the best, but sap. Okay? Bagsak lahat. No, they all fail. What's the reason he gives? No, uh, this is one example. He gives, uh, by the way, the, the, the poetic uh, writings there are not a single uh, piece of writing. These are quotes from the Old Testament. No, when it says, as it is written, no one is righteous. No, not one. No one understands. No one seeks for God. All have turned aside. Together they have become worthless. No one does good, not even one. So again, I think that's passage you would react to and say isn't that an exaggeration because people do good right um, uh, example one 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 group i personally appreciate uh, there's a temple right beside uh, our church in san juan no? uh, and nakikita ko active nila uh, the 2c foundation right the buddhist foundation is very very good in helping doing good works right so apparently they, they do this right they do good so again, have to, have to think this is in terms of in the eyes of God. That goodness is not enough. It's not enough. So that's actually a heavier uh, idea, right? The best thing we're doing, the, the, the sacrificial things they're doing, the people who have lost their lives, for example, are uh, rescuing people on the... I would say, no, the, the highest thing you could do for someone else to offer your life for someone. No, people have rescued. Do you remember in the news uh, during the flood? No, there, there was a guy who lost his life trying to save uh, other people. But in the eyes of God, the harsh, heavy truth of Romans chapter three is that in the eyes of God, 
I don't think God is saying, ah, don't care about it. That's not the attitude of God, I would believe. But it's more like it is not preaching uh, the goodness that God expects of us. Kaya mabigat po, mabigat po talaga yung Romans team because it is a blanket, universal statement. I believe all of us here, no, we are doing good works, no? Varying in magnitude. But when you offer it to God, I don't think God will say that's trash. Uh, I mean, not, not that way, but God will say that it is not enough. No? So the quote here is from Psalm 14 and 53. No? Uh, he goes on to say that, uh, and remember these are poetic languages, and when it was quoted in the song, uh, in a way Paul is expanding the context. No? Uh, I'll explain that a little bit more. No? But sinabi pa rito, their throat is an open grave. They use their tongues to deceive. No? And again, you might be thinking, ha, hindi naman lahat. Not all people are, are uh, uh, saying bad things, right? That, that's what it means when your throat is an open grave. You just spread darkness through your mouth. No? Sabihin natin, ang exaggerated naman yata yan. No? But that's, the, that's a quote from Psalm chapter 5, verse 9. And here, uh, because the language is a little poetic, uh, please remember what Paul is trying to do. He's trying to convince us generally this is true of everyone. He's not saying that there is no good thing you can say. He's saying that even the good things you're saying, when you look at your life in the eyes of God, kulang. Kulang po. It is lacking. It has missed the mark. Uh, he goes on to say, you know, the venom of asps, no, uh, it's under their lips, no, it's a poisonous insect, a quote from Psalm 140. Uh, their mouth is full of curses and bitterness, a quote from Psalm chapter 10, verse 7. Their mouth is full of curses and bitterness, their feet are swift to shed blood, in their paths are ruin and misery, and in the way of peace they have not known. Again, no, and I am projecting a little perhaps, and trying, and trying to assume what we might be reacting to that, no? But kasi pag nabasa po natin yun, know, we, we always think of other people, right? Oh, look at Russia. They are swift to shed blood, right? But not us, not me, right? Look at this, these people who are doing these bad things, but not me. So, Paul is saying, these are, this is us. No? These quotes, do uh, you know what's significant about these quotes? No? Uh, the last quote is, There is no fear of God before their eyes. A quote from Psalm 56, uh, verse 1. Do uh, you know one significant thing about these quotes? Uh, for the Jews, when they read that passage, uh, at least half of them are meant uh, compared to other people. No, it is meant to refer to the Gentiles. So when they read it, it is a putipatayo. Uh, thank God we are not like those people. That is kind of the attitude uh, that happens when these passages are read. So can you imagine the surprise of the Gentile readers when they say, when Paul says, that is actually you. Because you know? he expanded the context. Some of those quotes refer to just uh, Gentiles. Some of them refer to Israel. Some of them uh, uh, are general quotes. But Paul it combines all of those and gives us the fulfillment of those uh, quotes to say na, wait, that is us. Uh, it's not other people. It's not the Gentiles. It's not the Greeks. Uh, it's us. Uh, so, tayo po mga Christian. Uh, isn't it? No, I, I mentioned that in the last message. You know, we have that tendency to think, no, it's other people. You know, so, binabalik ko nang po. The, the target of this is always us. And so, my, my hope for you, you know, as you think about this, is to look internally. You know? muna tayo tumingin sa ibang tao. This is an internal thing. Does this, does this apply to us? Do you really believe the, the condition of our soul is this bad? Because if not, I think we will take... And again, I might be projecting. I might be assuming, right? But if you don't believe this is the death of your con condition, then our faith, the commands of God, we might still obey, right? Church will serve. But I don't think it would have the same weight as if you knew this was your hope. It will be God and other things. 
but the objective of this is to convince us you will you know, die without someone solving this issue for you. Kung nalaman po natin na ganun po isa kahotes, I think the, the weight of the gospel of your Lord Jesus Christ and His commands is gonna be different. So, there, there's a point to the negativity of chapter 1 to 3. It is meant to push us towards that. Kailangan niyo po kasi si Jesus. No? Um, so, to summarize all those quotes, no, to summarize to all, all those quotes, uh, in a way, what it's telling us is that no one, no, sige, papa, next na lang, uh, uh, no one can escape that charge, neither Jew nor Greek, even if you think you are such a good person, no, no one can escape the charge of you are a sinner, guilty. It is a criminal charge. No, the whole chapter one to three, pag binasa niyo po yan, it is like reading your sentencing, right? Uh, this is what you did. No one can escape it. No, uh, no one can escape it. Okay. Uh, next. No, Romans three chapter nine, uh, uh, verse nineteen. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. You know what that means? Every mouth will be stopped. It means there is no hope of any defense. There is no hope of complaint. Wala na pong mahakapagsabi kay God. No one can respond. No one can say, walang excuse, right? No one can say to God, oh, I have extenuating circumstances. But uh, every mouth will be closed when the sentence is given guilty of sin. This full chapter 1 to 3 is a condemning, you know, a condemning statement. Close na lang po mouths natin. Kasi wala po tayo masasabi. Right? That is, the, that is what this is saying. Uh, hey, I gave an example the last time I was here, no? Yes, even for, what if there was a person in a remote mountain, right? Uh, doing no harm to people, uh, never hearing about the gospel. No, nandun lang siya sa mountain, uh, uh, in, in this remote uh, place, living quietly. Would this still apply to them? What God is saying, because it is a human nature thing, it applies. Mouths will be closed. Whole world will be held accountable. Um, let, me, let me introduce a topic, you know, we usually, a uh, theological term we usually use, okay, for next, which is total depravity. No, uh, no that's, a, uh, that's a technical term, but uh, a very common one uh, with, that's thrown around. And sometimes people react, na, ha, eh, again, exaggeration. Uh, people can still do good, right? That's not what total depravity means. That is a doctrine that says uh, man is completely sinful. Not that we are as bad as we could be. Again, we can do good things, right? Total depravity means, however, that even the good things we're doing cannot earn God's acceptance, right? Because sin permeates to every level of our being, from our minds to our no hearts to our actions, lahat po yun affected. And so when God looks at us, what He sees, He sees our is a sinner. Total depravity. We have a total inability to earn God's favor. Uh, so again, no, uh, now, sometimes I criticize my own Christians. Uh, again, I, 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 I see those uh, complaints. May nagsabi rin sa akin na, parang, uh, again, uh, aren't you guys so negative on yourselves? Won't that make you so depressed and have low self-esteem? No, You keep saying you're sinner, sinner, sinner. Uh, uh, how does that affect you? Um, again, no, I, have, I, I hope it balances out. That on the other hand, you know, a lot, some of the most spiritually mature people I know, especially the older saints, no, the, the, who have lived the life of serving God, naman po sila negative, right? They are happy, they are confident, they are satisfied, right? So I see that it doesn't turn out that way, right? You know why? Because again, again, this does not say we don't do good things to our fellow men. Okay, okay naman yun eh. But it says those things. Have, it's not able to, 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 you're not able to come to God and say, God, look at the good things I've done. God will still say, uh, it doesn't meet, meet the standard. 
right? That's what total depravity means, no? And it is a hopeless doctrine in a way, if we end it there, no? Wala, wala po tayong gawin. The most moral person, no? If, because I mentioned the name earlier, right? If Bill Gates, for example, no? Uh, I think he committed to give away uh, the majority of his wealth, right? And if he really does that, no, kung talagang walang corruption yun, he does that, he has so many people, at the end of his life, if he does not believe in Christ, the reality is, uh, he will be rejected. Ganun, yun po sabihin ng total depravity, right? If you lose, uh, no, it is heartbreaking whenever there's, uh, there, there is some, uh, some tragedy, some, some disaster, right? Uh, you, you hear people, who, the rescuers who lose their lives. How uh, oh, that really bothers me that they lose their lives in service of uh, other people. But if they have not uh, uh, done anything to make them right with God, those deeds are not enough. Isn't that, isn't that a heartbreaking condition of the human soul? But at the end of the day, God will say, doesn't meet the standard, right? Um, I am not presuming that that's what God will do. Okay? I am just saying that uh, that's what the implication of total depravity is. Again, at the end of the day, uh, I, I encourage us not to give those pronouncements to people who have died. We trust in the goodness of God, right? However, that is the warning of this, cons this doctrine, right? Our good deeds are not enough. Okay? Our good deeds are not enough. Total depravity. Um, so, what's the hope? When you read the Bible, uh, there's a, a, an additional, an additional, uh, in a way, no burden Paul gives us. Pag nagbasa ka daw ng Bible, uh, there's not, not, not immediate relief. You know why? The Word of God, one of the first things it does to us is it removes all self-righteousness. That is a painful process. That is an uncomfortable process. But it is needed if you are to be healed. Huh? Does the passage tell us this? Sabe, the last verse we have now, for by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. Ano po yung It means, no, when you read your Bible, uh, what it just does uh, is not to save you before God. Sabi natin lagi po, no? Uh, we say always in the church, no, read your Bible, have your personal devotion, but that won't save you. Do you know why? Because the more you read the Bible, do you know what happens in, in, in experience? That is what happens to me, right? The more you read God's Word, the more your knowledge of sin grows and you, you reflect, wait a minute, this is me, right? This is how I miss the mark. This is how deep my heart is in sin. So the more you read the Bible, sometimes, I am, uh, no, I have missed the mark. I have not honor God. Okay. If perhaps, no, speaking theoretically, and Paul does argue that elsewhere, I believe, no, if people was somehow, a person was somehow to uh, perfectly obey everything, then perhaps he would be justified. But he, what Paul is saying, no, no one has been able to do it, no, because the more you read God's law, the more it just convicts you that you have broken it. There's only one person who was able to fulfill everything perfectly, and that's our Lord Jesus Christ. Every single person has not been able to do it. And that is, again, the depth of the human condition. So, pag isipan niyo po yun, no? uh, uh, isn't it true, right? The more you read, sometimes, of course, of course, our God is a God who knows how to give good gifts, who is loving. Of course, it encourages us, right? I urge you to do it. Uh, have your devotion. Spend time with God. No, I am, I am spiritually down. Of course, it nourishes my soul. But at the same time, there are times when you read it. It's like, sasasakpo tayo sa heart, right? Para po tayo pa ulit-ulit ako sasasak sa puso. Kasi, this is, I, I wasn't able to do this. So it brings you to, to shame before God at times, which is what happens to me, uh, 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 depending on the passage, right? So, obeying the law cannot, cannot save us, no? An additional, additional uh, uh, concept to the total depravity doctrine, no? Uh, but these are debatable, no? Uh, uh, some implications there is that every single person is born 
no? with that number one sinful nature it is but you are also born guilty already because of what adam did now of course uh have you heard that concept right adam represented us in the garden of eden because adam sinned everyone has sinned so one person represented us uh, it, just the same way that jesus christ represented us uh, before god through the cross Right? But even if you debate it, some people will debate it, I wasn't born there, I wasn't guilty. Uh, but isn't it true, we have a sinful nature. So every person who complains, I wasn't there, I wasn't guilty. A self-reflection would reveal, we are enslaved to sin, right? Can't help it. Four months old to your daughter go, but no. Uh, uh, I, I, I know eventually, eventually you know, uh, she gets angry so much when we feed her. But I don't know I to understand this, this, uh, uh, what she's thinking. But we're born with a sinful nature. I know when she goes a little older, I don't have to teach it. Right? Sin will grow up. Total depravity. And the more you read, the, the, the more puta na ikinig na mga messages. Diba? The more lang puta yung pinapatamaan din sa I know that's a negative thing. I know a lot of you are coming to church with the hope that my, you will be nourished spiritually. You will be refreshed. No? But again, I urge you, no, without knowing the depth of your condition, you will not appreciate the medicine. Right? This is what it is doing. No? Um, so, what, what? How do we apply yeah, this? No? It's, it's a doctrinal passage, passage, right? It's, it's a doctrinal passage. Panabayan, panabayan na apply to sa atin. Okay. One is uh, let me skip ba? Oh, ane. One is I think it's a passage that uh, should let us cut out, should encourage us. Tanggalin po natin yung self righteousness. No. Ah, uh, ignore mo na natin second statement. Na no? wala lang yung ah. Uh, 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 animation on. Cut out self-righteousness. What does that mean? Because if the doctrine of total depravity is true, none at single one of us has the moral ground to look at other people and say, I am good, you are a sinner. No, it is a rehash of what I urged you last time, right? Please, no, uh, uh, let us not turn. No, uh, it's my urge, it's my desire for our churches. Metalis, uh, that you, we will not be a caricature of Christianity, which is what happens when Christians become self-righteous. You know what I mean by a caricature? You would see extreme things like, have you seen the images, uh, especially in, in the West, uh, of uh, people, who, the church, especially, you know, the Westboro Church, who picket uh, uh, abortion clinics, uh, 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 gay rights uh, gathering, uh, pride parades, who picket it in protest. And again, nothing wrong, that's a right to picket, right? To, to, to protest, rather. Meaning, may sign silang nakawakan. But what's on the sign is that God hates you. God hates uh, gays. Although they use a slur word, right? Gays go to hell. Uh, uh, you, will go, you will die. Such hateful messages. I think the whole church is united. That's a caricature. Right? But even in the little things we're doing, when we self-righteous, we turn into caricatures. No? I'm saying, no, no, parang, parang, ha, what are we doing? Or whenever we react that way, that's actually already, in a way, no, you're implying that, what are we doing? Why are we doing that? I'm not doing that. When we react that way. Okay, I'm not saying we don't call out sin, by the way. I'm talking about the attitude. You see, other people. Let me give a specific example. No? May, may nakita po, sometimes some people smoke, right? Magre-react ang ibang matagal na Christians. Ano ba ang ginagawa yan? Meron nag-react din. Sometimes, ang kita may tattoo, right? I, I, I'm not promoting those things, by the way. Please don't do them. Uh, I would encourage you not to do them, right? Pero may tattoo, right? I mean, honestly, nothing wrong for me with the tattoo. Marami lang pa sa siguro yung tattoo niya rito. And some of the... May nag-react po dito, no? Hindi po ako nakatingin dyan, ha? I mean, it's a full sleeve, right? And so a lot of people, when you full sleeve of tattoo, may nag-react po ni leader na, parang, ano yan? Ba't ganyan? But that's nowhere in the Bible, right? 
It's a symptom of self-righteousness. And I urge you not to become a Harika. It comes out, I think, a lot, especially today, like the Ingay Po, is when you meet uh, uh, either LGBTQ uh, people who identify as those or who are in support of those, kung makareact po tayo, right? Sometimes, diba? Have you heard of the term, uh, the idiom? Uh, I don't know how much is used now, but clutching your pearls. So um, that's how they call Christians sometimes. But uh, think of the old, uh, old time uh, movies, right? Or when you're informal, you're clutching your pearls. When you see something bad, na parang kaganoon ka na parang you're so you're so scandalized by it, right? Uh, parang kana sa 1950, uh, uh, surprised by what's happening. Sometimes th that's how uh, the non-Christians look at the Christian church. Sometimes, oh no, a lot of times, right? When we react thoughtlessly. To those things. So that's a symptom, I believe. No, and and think about if what I'm telling you is true, please. No, uh, you can disagree or agree, but reflect. Right? Is it a symptom of self righteousness? A self right? Is that parang oh, I'm better than you? Right? But the number two application is the flip side. No, I believe this is a call also that since the condition of man is so deep, then make sure your life is lived. For Christ. Do you not call out sin? Meron po akong isang dini disciple, uh, again, who, who uh, identifies as LGBTQ and my partner, but I did t tell, tell that person, right, this is what, have, this is the, what the biblical stand is. But thank God, I think, no, I, I, don't, I, I didn't really know what I'm doing. Somehow, I think. It became a safe conversation that keeps meeting with me. But even if I have showed him, no, this is what the biblical stand is. So I was able to say it, I believe, in a uh, non-compromising way, but without extra judgment. So not coming off as an expert, I'm kind of stumbling my way through it also, but it is possible. You live, make sure your life is lived for Christ. So, yung mga ganyang sin po, I'm just saying, don't be self-righteous. But our job also is to call it out. No? In Matthew chapter 6, no, uh, uh, this is what Jesus tells us, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. This is such a memorable line, right? For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. I think, no, uh, if you combine this with the doctrine of total depravity, um, it, it should point us towards then, then the point of life, point of life is share this good news of Jesus Christ. Now, the point of life, what gives your life meaning, is to make sure that people know how to solve this condition. Because, because every one of us, us again, again, are guilty. Wala mga katakas dun. But wala rin, wala rin, uh, hindi kaya makuha ang good news, right? So there's bad news, there's good news. Everyone is guilty under Christ. That is true. But also, the, the good news of Christ is available for all. So what will give your life meaning is this is the treasure. This is the treasure. As you go to your work, you go through your business. No, I believe God does not call us all. No? This, this doesn't imply that all ministry is done inside the church. Far from it. As you go, the command says, no? as you go, do your thing in the world. Go and make disciples of all nations. Because it's needed. Huh? Again, how good the people are at the end of the day, the human condition applies to all. We need the gospel. We need the gospel. So, yes, I, I'm not saying you don't call out sin. But, uh, see, one mark of being self-righteous is if, if you just call out sin, you react, oh, bad thing I go out. But that's incomplete, right? So you have to also tell them, what's the good news of Christ? So, uh, I... I hope, no, we don't turn into a caricature. At the same time, no, uh, uh, please be careful about judging each other. No? At the end of the day, it's between you and God. Uh, 
it's hard to give a, a, a one, this is how you are going to talk to people. But I want you to reflect on that. There are vestiges of self-righteousness whenever you engage with the world. Or are you not doing that work of you have to tell them what the gospel uh, is? So uh, I would re repeat now what was uh, given in last week's message. No, these are the commands of God. Today, Sabi sa Psalm 95, you hear His voice, do not harden your hearts. Man shall not live in Matthew chapter 4 by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Even these first three chapters is very negative. That is what man needs. So again, let me wrap up with that. No, uh, We will never appreciate the good news if you don't know the bad news first. So I hope no, it turns us away from self-righteousness, but it urges you. You have to share this people. Kailangan po nila. Kailangan po nila. No? Uh, one of the prayers I have is my, my family will uh, turn to Christ. My dad is a uh, senior already uh, and who is very hard-hearted. I don't know if you'll hear this, no? but it's very hard-hearted, right? doesn't believe uh, this. So, what, 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 how, how am I gonna, how am I gonna plan how to engage my dad? You know, I cannot, I cannot let go of this. I have to find a way, you know, not to be self-righteous with him, but to share. This is the solution. You know, as you, we end the message, and uh, hopefully you would go to your groups uh, throughout the week, you know, uh, or, or even later. So here are some questions for you to think about. You know, how are we gonna start doing that application? So can I suggest, uh, suggest right, three discussion questions. So uh, one is perhaps to help us discern, you know, uh, are we really, uh, do we really believe uh, that, that the, the, the sinful nature is totally depraved? Uh, maybe try to think of in our current context, are there things we're doing, actions, traditions that we do to earn God's favor? Uh, for example, uh, uh, do we start to think about going to Sunday worship as a means to earn God's favor? Siyempre, we want you to be here, right? But are we unconsciously using it to say, God, telling ko, God, good job ako. So, right? Think about those things. It could be different for each one. Right, the service we're doing, the good things we're doing, the donations we're doing. Uh, try to think about it, right? How, how do, are there things happening with us now? Number two is hopefully a, a question you could think talk about with other people. Kasi bas, baka mas makita ng ibang tao. No? How can we prevent coming off as self-righteous to non-Christians? No? Uh, and this is something that requires accountability. Because the things you're saying, body language, your posts in social media, could it be right? for coming off as superior? So this takes some uh, introspection and encouragement from other people. The last is, uh, uh, on the flip side, again, uh, we cannot, let, cannot not confront sin and rebuke sin. But how do you do it in a way that is both uncompromising and gracious? With that, I believe there are a lot of models in, in the New Testament, how that's done, right? But you have to think about it in your context now. In your, depending on how we do that, how do we do that in a way that doesn't compromise, but is compassionate? So I hope not these are helpful questions as you no, again, my desire is that our churches would have this posture of you know, not compromising the Word of God, uh, but also reflecting the whole good news of love and grace and truth. So, dapat pantay pantay po. Hey, can I pray for you? Um, thank you for this time. Uh, we know these passages are, are, are negative, are Sometimes uncomfortable to hear. Sometimes we we react. Uh, we we immediately react that this does not apply to us. We disagree with it. We we uh, do not like the idea that this is our condition. But Father, convict us. Holy Spirit, uh, can you help search the hearts of everyone here so that they would validate if this is really true. 
Uh, they would not just hear it from, from today's message, but really believe in their hearts whether this is true or not. And help us, Father, to, to uh, make whatever adjustment we have to make so that our posture, our, how we engage the world, how we engage other people would be truthful and loving at the same time. Thank you for this opportunity today. This is the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen.